okay so welcome to this uh, session so actually we have already discussed uh, some concepts on simple stress let me just have a recap on uh, our uh, learning objectives so on simple stress we are bound to have these learning objectives we have distinguished different types of internal forces then describe material behavior under different type of stresses and then construct comprehensive fbd or free body diagrams in solving problems and then relate to different formulas variables and units involved in simple stress and of course interpret and discuss the results of analysis of internal forces so we have actually defined the simple stress the formula is simple just so uh, stick to the formula sigma is equal to force all over area and uh, simple stress are classified into normal stress shear stress bearing stress and for the si unit system it is expressed in megapascal and megapascal is expressed in uh, terms of newton per square millimeter or mega newton per square meter so in English system, we have uh, PSF or pounds per square foot and uh, PSI or pounds per square inches. In customary US units, we have uh, KIPS per square inches or KSI. So we have learned that uh, the normal stress is uh, caused by the normal force. And the normal force is a force that is parallel with the axis of your material or member so uh, normal stress or normal force could either be tension or in compression where in tension is just that your uh, your force along the axis is just stretching your member so when when we talk on stretching your your arrowhead or the direction of your force is uh, away from the body or pulling away the body and compressive force is the opposite so it is just uh, tends to shorten your member where in the the direction of the arrowhead is towards or towards the member or a pushing force towards the body so now for the shear stress I have a previous slide in here that the shear stress is just uh, uh, equivalent to V over A and it is expressed in a tau or the Greek letter tau. So it came from, from the simple formula also that sigma is equal to P all over A. So if we talk on shear, we'll just have to replace that. Uh, symbol to tau and your force will now be v and this is the area so this v here is the shear force or the tangential force and then area here is the shear area okay so take note that the shear force is just a, a cutting force that passes through a section so whatever the area that uh, this shear force cuts that will be the shear area simple as that okay so there are several types of uh, uh, cases wherein uh, shear force will prevail on a certain uh, setup so, so first we have a rivet in a single shear so as we can see we can uh, uh, have here two plates that are joined by single rivet or a pin and if we're going to apply P here, that is along the axis of the plate. So the, the stress on the plate is actually normal stress. It is actually stretching, stretching out these plates. Okay, so the, plate, the top plate and the bottom plate. Because of that, it will develop a shear force between the boundaries of these two plate okay and this shear force will tend to cut your 
rivet. And the, 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 the rivet that is this being sliced, of course, the slice portion is the cross-sectional area of the circular uh, diameter of your rivet or the pin. So the plate will be slicing force to cut directly the cross section of the bolt or rivet. So the same case in rivet in a double shear, but this time it will involve two cuts along your rivet or your bolt. So unlike on your single shear, so the cut the the, the cut force that will develop is only on a single cross section so involving three plates here of course the tendency there will be two cuts here okay two cut portion and that two cut for portion will have a double shear so simply your formula in this case tau is equal to v over a we will just have to express it in uh, tau is equal to 2 over e. So, we'll just have to double your area. So, why double? Because it involved two areas that are being cut. So, if you cannot remember that one, just uh, refer to the free body diagram. Okay. So, on your free body diagram, if I'm going to have here your bolt, say this is your bolt. So V here, or P, caused by this plate, will just be resisted by two force or two shear forces. P here will cause two shear forces, okay? So against the direction of your P. So therefore, P here being denoted as V, meaning your V here will be just divided by 2. Okay? It will be just divided by 2. Say this is a V1 and V2. V1 and V2 are equal. Say if you're going to have your P expressed in uh, shear, okay? If the shear that the shear force caused by this formula is that V is being divided by 2, okay? It is just distributed to these two cut forces. Okay, for the next case, we have here a punching shear on columns and footing. So we can uh, experience this when we have an interaction between a footing and a column, okay? So, of course, your footing will serve as a pad, okay? Pad that is resting on your supporting soil. So, it is resting on the supporting soil. And then, this pad will now carry your column. So, if we are going to apply an actual force or a normal force to your column. So the stress in the column will be, again, normal normal stress. And uh, if P is uh, exceeding, will tend to exceed the capacity of the shear stress of your, your pad or your footing, tendency is it will be punch, punch out, just like a uh, puncher and a paper. Of course, if you're going to apply an actual load on that and then this is um, sharp we have a sharp edge here on the puncher tendency it will gonna punch punch it on a hole this pad okay this pad or this uh, footing so therefore your shear is caused by P so if this is your P say this is the hole Shear actually 
is a resisting force that will tend to cut the circular portion and it will produce a hole in it. So therefore, P, the reaction is V. So because of P, an actual force and the actual force or this uh, column is connected to your pad, it will cause here a shear force or a cutting force. Okay, so what will be our punching area in this case? So the area of cut is simply the perimeter times the thickness. Okay, so the perimeter times the, the thickness. So in this case, your perimeter is actually pi d if it is circular. Okay, pi d times your thickness that will be the shear area. Okay, so moving on. We also have a shear stress on built-up sections or glued sections. Now, we do not have any problem on shear if the force is actual. When, the, when your member is a solid one. So, there will be no problem if, the, if your section is a solid one. But if we have a discontinuity on it and then uh, it is just glued, Okay, the section is just glued. Therefore, if you're going to apply this one, there will be a shear force that will be developed on that glued section. Okay, so if we consider this, we will be having a shear forces. Because remember, that shear, the term shear here is a tangential force. Okay, so meaning if we have a tangent, meaning it is a touching force on surface so this touching force here will come from the component of p so if we have here a glued section on that section we'll develop the component of p so we'll apply a geometrical principle and uh, the trigonometric uh, principles in order to solve for that uh, shear component okay so that is, so again, your shear will be uh, occurring on the glued section and a build-up section as well. So as we can see here on the beam, though we have here a cantilever beam composing of uh, three boards, whether it is glued together or not, the tendency is if it is subjected to bending, of course, this will, this will, tend to separate and be because of the frictional phenomena between and among the layers. So why frictional phenomena? Because of course the each of the member will be stretched out so that it will have a gap on it. So there will be developed a shear, horizontal shear force here, whether it is bonded or not uh, or not glued together. Okay. So when it is uh, strongly bonded, there will be no problem. However, still there will be a shear resistance between and among the glued section here, whether it is uh, bolted or riveted. So if, if it cannot tolerate your, your, the strength of your glue or the bonding, it will separate. Just like a deck of cards, okay? So if we're gonna have a deck of cards here, of course, that contains... A multiple layer so if you're going to push this one along this direction of course this will tend to be separated along those uh, layers okay so that is the explanation there now shear stress on wood grains so of course because of uh, uh, the layers of course the wood have its layers also and those layers are also vulnerable to shear stress okay so as we can see here the the failure or the shear failure comes along the orientation of your grains okay so as we can see on the picture okay so 
shear stress on beams when your member is uh, being used as a horizontal member carrying a vertical loading such as this if we're going to apply here a loading a concentration there will be a shear forces develop okay a various uh, shear forces along all over this beam okay so the tendency is the shear will develop on the concentration where's the concentration of course first we have a concentration on your reaction and then in this case it is concentrated on this support roller so if we we do not have a sufficient uh, shear reinforcement or your section cannot tolerate the shear force anymore tendency is your crack will or, or cracks will develop on this concrete beam that will follow the nearest uh, concentrations okay connecting the near uh, concentration on uh, top and bottom okay so just as this that is why in your reinforced concrete usually the the shear force is uh, larger on the support okay so the shear force on a beam normally is highest or largest at its support so if this is your support your shear stress is having a maximum value normally on your support reaction okay so what you will do in reinforced concrete you will you will observe that the web reinforcement of or the shear reinforcement is uh, confined near the support okay and then uh, it will uh, have a larger spacing on the mid span and then again it will have a confined uh, web reinforcement or possibly to resist the shear brought by your loading whether your loading is a an earthquake loading or a gravity loads so later on you will uh, discover that in your later subjects okay so another type of uh, normal stress is the bearing stress so when we say a bearing stress it is just a contact pressure of two surfaces it is called the bearing stress so if we have here again a connection a type of connection wherein a bolt is connecting the plate or a member there will be a contact between your bolt and the plate okay so that contact force is actually the force of or the bearing force okay and then the the area that is being contact between these two surfaces are actually a bearing area okay so just the same we'll just have to use this one simple formula p over a only that we must have to denote that this is a bearing force and this is a bearing stress and this is the bearing area so if we take the area the contact between these two it is actually the semicircle or the perimeter of this uh, semicircle times the thickness okay so this shade with shaded portion here that is actually the bearing area but in case of a bearing bearing uh, force on a rivet we are talking about small uh, small diameters of uh, rivet or pin connection so it is acceptable that uh, we can express the bearing area is equal to the diameter times your thickness so it can be expressed by diameter times thickness 
or if you want a precise cal calculation that's it you you will have to consider a perimeter times thickness so again if you're going to try this one it will just yield to almost equal to this one because we are talking about small value of diameter of that uh, uh, rivet or bolt okay so that's it for the bearing stress so let us now proceed to examples so actually we had the examples uh, last time so we'll just have to have more examples so problem number one we have here a column or circular column and a pad and this pad is serving as a footing that is resting on the ground so what force is required to punch a 300 millimeter hole in a plate that is 200 millimeter thick and the shear strength is just limited to 300 megapascals so first let us take note of your sigma or the allowable shear is uh, 380 megapascals and then we just have to apply this one substitute and then the shear force and then what will be the area of the shear area here okay or the cut area caused by this p so by the way v here is also p and then your area is perimeter times thickness and what would be the perimeter that would be equal to pi all over 4 times 300 squared so that is the perimeter of this uh, 300 hole here and then the thickness is 200 mm or uh, this should be perimeter this should be pi d sorry so the perimeter is pi d pi times 300 times thickness of 200 so by cross multiplication we can right away get the value of p so p will yield to 71 million 628,312.5 newton so this is the required p in order to have a, a punch hole here caused by the shear stress on the footing okay so that's it for the first problem so moving on to the second problem we have a similar one so the square column is to be punched out of a plate having a shearing strength of 20.7 megapascal so the plate here is limited to 20.7 megapascal and then the compressive stress in the punch is limited to 30 megapascal so letter a compute the maximum thickness of footing in which a hole of 300 millimeter square dimension can be punched and the letter b if the footing is 250 millimeter thick determine the dimension of the smallest column that can be punched so basically letter a and b have two different approaches because we have two different conditions in the problem so for letter a let us have the required so what is the required here compute the maximum thickness of the footing so we are referring to the thickness of the footing see i'm denoting that by t okay so what is given here so the square hole has a dimension of 300 by 300 okay so that is 300 by 300 So if that is 300 by 300, all we need is to multiply that by its thickness to come up with the shear area. So unknown here is the thickness. If we have a limited uh, compressive stress in the punch, so we can denote that by a compressive stress allowable is equal to 30 megapascal so before i'm going to elaborate this let us also have the other unknown another given here is the 
uh, allowable shearing strength of 20.7 megapascal. Now, if we have to consider here the shear force, let us just write the formula, shear all over area. And on this formula, we can now determine the thickness by simply substituting the value of the allowable and the shear area, which is the perimeter times thickness. However, we do not know here the shear force. So the shear force would be determined out of this compressive limit. So compressive limit will be applied to the column itself. Okay? And this P here, or the actual force in the column, will also be equivalent to the shear force on the footing. So if we get P here, P here just is just equal to V on the footing and P is the force, the actual force on the column. So that is the sequence of our solution. First, we're going to get the equivalent V here out of P here on the allowable 30 megapascal. And so we have sigma is equal to P over A. Substitute the allowable. Unknown here is P. And the area is the area of the cross section, which is 300 millimeter square, or that is 300 by 300 millimeter. Therefore, we have 2.7 times 10 raised to 6 newton. So this is derived uh, out of the limit of the actual force on the column. And this shall be used because eventually this P will transfer to this pad. And the effect of it is a shear effect or the shear force. And so we can place it here. And then uh, for the perimeter, the perimeter is just simply 4 times 300. Okay, and then the thickness is a no. Hence, upon calculation, we can find it to be 108.69 millimeters. So this is the required thickness to punch out this hole under the limit of the compression, 30 megapascal, and the tau here, or the shear stress on the pad or the footing, equivalent to 20.7 megapascal. So that is for letter E. So for letter B, we're, go we're just going to re re uh, reverse the process because this time the thickness of footing is given and then we're going to determine the dimension of the smallest column that can be punched. So for letter B, The flows of solution will uh, start with your footing. Shear is equal to V all over A. Okay. So your limit here is uh, 20.7. So we're just going to use that. And then solve for V. And then solve for A. A here is uh, perimeter times thickness okay so we do not know yet the perimeter so maybe we can express it in 4 times x x being the dimension the square dimension of your hole here so let us denote that, that by x and this is the perimeter 4 times x and then this is uh, multiplied by your thickness 250 so out of that we can express v in terms of x so we have here 20,700 times x so let this be our first equation and obviously the second equation or the supplemental equation will come from your actual load on the column 
And the formula is uh, given by compressive stress all over the area. Okay, so the compressive allowable on the column is pegged to be 30 megapascals. And your P actually is also shear. And then shear is 20,700 of X. And then the cross-sectional area will be equal to x times x. Hence, we can cancel one of the x and come up with the answer, which is 690 millimeter. So this is the minimum dimension of your P so that it could resist those uh, given allowables. For compression, we have 30 and for the shear, we have 20.7 megapascal for the footing okay so that's it for the second problem and moving on to the third problem we have uh, a clevis and a clevis is actually holding this bolt here so that another member is attached on it so this is a perfect example of a double shear because if we're going to apply here a force away from this uh, bolt it will develop here a cutting force okay this is the shear force actually so basically you we'll just have to apply here the simple formula v over a and the allowable shearing strength is limited to 300 megapascal so in actual if we're going to take a look at the free body here so we have an upward P and then two downwards V hence therefore P is equal to twice of V or simply V is equal to P all over 2. So we can replace this by P all over 2. So just sim or just uh, remember that the double area okay. V all over 2. A. So we do not want this one. So anyway, uh, we can just stick to your uh, free body diagram. But if we have a double shear, just take note of this uh, V lower. We'll just have to double the area. And the shear force is just equal to the P here. Okay, so in this case, we have... Uh, 300 is equal to P all over 2 times the shear area. Okay, what is the shear area? So actually, we are cutting the cross section of the bolt. And we are after with the diameter. So we express your area in terms of diameter. That is simply pi all over 4 times d squared. Okay, and then we are going to just cross multiply that one and then uh, get the square root. Uh, by the way, uh, this is uh, 400 and that is in kilonewton. So we must have to multiply this by 1000 to make it in newton. So always remember that your force is in... Uh, Newton and this denominator or the area will always be in millimeters times millimeters or that is millimeter squared. So by cross multiplication and manipulation of the equation we can get the value of our D. So we'll be having a value here of 29.13 millimeters. Okay, so that's it for the third problem. So moving on to the fourth so problem number four 
we have here a 200 millimeter diameter pulley is prevented from rotating relative to 50 millimeter diameter shaft by a 500 millimeter diameter key here so as we can see in the configuration this pulley is being attached to the shaft out of the lock okay so the the purpose of the key here is to have an uh, slot so this key is inserted to the shaft connected to the pulley and that will be locked out of the slot because of this uh, on this shaft so our task here is to determine the width B if the allowable shearing stress in the key is 60 megapascal. So what would be the tendency if that is the case? So if we if this this um, pulley tends to rotate, of course, there will be a resistance on the on the key. Okay. So here's the scenario. There will be a slot here. So this shaft will have a uh, interlocking on this slot. And because of the rotation, this will be cut. Okay. That portion will be sliced by the shaft. On the condition that the shaft should be harder than that of the key here. And that is actually given in the condition of the problem, wherein the key has an allowable shearing stress of uh, 60 megapascal. So let us uh, have that, say, tau allowable is equal to 60 megapascal. So we'll just have to write that one. Hence, shearing stress is V over E. Then we just substitute. That is 60. So we write V here for a while. And then the shearing area is the shear cut. What is the area to be cut? So it is actually a rectangular section having B and the, the length here. So B here uh, is actually unknown. So we place it on the area multiplied by 500. So 500 is actually the length of this shaft so we're gonna place that one 500 okay so if we could only determine here the shear the shear the shear force caused by the couple and then we can compute the required width of the key so we will just consider here the free body diagram of that. So the resisting force is a horizontal force that is against the rotation. Okay. So we can relate the two by taking moments at the point of origin. Okay. Why point of origin? Because we can refer the couple on the point of origin. And the uh, F has a distance on the point of origin because we have here a circular motion. So summation moments at point O, we have F times the moment arm from O. So perhaps we can refer to the diameter of the shaft that is equal to 500 millimeter. Okay. And that 50 will just be divided by 2. And then uh, we have a couple. And by the way, this shall be indicated by negative because it is counterclockwise. So we just add the couple, couple first. That is 4 kilonewton meter. And in this case, it should be express that the 4 will be in terms of kilonewton and 
mm. So let us convert this one. So in 1 kilonewton, there are 1000 newton. So that we can cancel this. And then uh, in 1 meter, there are 1000 millimeter. So again, we can cancel that one. So therefore, this is 4 times 10 raised to 6 newton millimeter. So we can simply place it here. 4 times 10 raised to 6 is equal to 0. So we do not have to multiply this by any distance because this is already in terms of newton meter or newton millimeter. So distance here is implied talking about C. So therefore we can just transpose that to the other side and then solve for F. So we will get to 160,000 newton as for V or the force. So F here will be applied here so that the effect on your shaft and key will be a shear force so shear force and F are the same so 160,000 since shear force and F are the same we just have to place it here 160,000 So this will yield to Newton and then solve for B, V by a B by cross multiplication and manipulation. So we will, we will have 5.33 millimeters. Okay, so that's it for the fourth problem. So moving on to the next, we have a plate and a rivet so for the problem number five in the figure shown assume that a 16 millimeter diameter rivet joins the plates that are each 110 millimeter wide and then the allowable stresses are 100 millimeter 100 megapascal for the bearing in the plate material and 40 megapascal for shearing of the rivet itself. So letter A, determine the minimum thickness of each plate. And then the largest average tensile stress in the plates. So this problem will, will now include bearing stress because we have here a given bearing allowable for the plate material. So we are gonna consider to consider uh, to to allowables here for the shear stress we have 40 megapascal which is for the rivet and the bearing stress 100 megapascal in the plate so these are considered as allowables so for the minimum thickness of the plate it shall emanate from the allowable stress on the plate okay say we have here for the plate and then consider the formula the bearing stress is equal to the bearing force all over the bearing area we substitute the allowable for the plate however the bearing force is not yet determined and then the area this is a bearing so the contact between the rivet and the plate will be diameter times thickness and the diameter of your rivet is 16 mm so we'll just place it here 16 times thickness and leave this for a while to be equation one so where shall we get the other equation of course for the other condition wherein the allowable for the rivet is 
defined by the shear, 40 megapascal. So we can see here for the rivet, tau is equal to V over E, where tau is peg at 40 megapascals. And then the shear force and the cross sectional area. So we can right away get the value of the shear force. And this would yield to 8042.48 Newton. So what is the essence of getting shear force here? So remember that P will cause here a, a cutting force that is equivalent to V. And therefore, the P here would be equivalent to the shear force and also the bearing force. Okay. So P will cause a shear force, a single, this is a rivet, a, a rivet in a single shear, and then it will also cause a contact pressure between the, the rivet and the plate. So this is the key to the solution, wherein we'll just have to say that this is uh, also the bearing force. Okay. So by that, we can uh, substitute it in here. Say so we have 8042.48, then we can now get the thickness of the plate. So here we will yield to 5.03 millimeter as the thickness. Okay. So letter B, what is the average largest? So we have here an adjective largest average tensile stress in the plates. So remember that tensile stress could be just computed by this simple formula. Okay. Sigma is equal to P all over E. See, see this is the tensile stress. So in this case, If we have here a solid plate without a hole in it, we'll just have to consider this cross-sectional area. It is just simply equal to the width, okay, the width times the thic thickness, okay. However, On this section, on this particular section where it passes through the rivet, there will be a decrease on your cross-sectional area. Okay? So a, de a certain decrease in your cross-sectional cross area, of course, it will affect the calculation. Okay. So we'll be having here the cross section which is decreased. Okay, so let's say this is now your cross section. So using the formula here, if we have a decreased area, tendency is that your value for shear will increase also. That is why if we are going to consider the area for the largest stress between a solid and an area which has a hole in it, of course, the, max, the largest value will come from an area that is reduced. Okay, so we are going to consider this. By the way, what is the width of our plate? So the width of the plate is set to be 110 millimeters. So perhaps you can place it here. 110 millimeters. And then the thickness is actually computed a while ago. 5.03 millimeter and this 110 will be 
reduced or 16 mm shall be removed from 110 so out of the space on the rivet so by the way let me reiterate that if this is the top view say this is the hole on your rivet so p here is a actual force is an actual force that will cause this to split okay so if this is this will be splitting therefore the involved area is the the reduced area along this section say section aa okay so again the largest value for sigma is the reduced one if we are talking about a pulling or tensile force but if we have two plates joined by a rivet wherein the actual force tends to be a compressive one of course the space provided by the the rivet will not be deducted why because the area is still filled with the rivet meaning the space provided by the rivet is also filled by the rivet itself if we are talking about compression okay but if we're going to have a tension of course the involved or the stretch material is the reduced section deducting the hole occupied by the rivet okay but in compression we do not have to deduct the hole because the compressive area is filled by the rivet itself so i hope that is clear to you we will just have to deduct the space if it we talk on tensile stress so in this case we are actually after with the largest average tensile stress okay so now going back to this we are after with the largest the maximum tensile stress is equal to P which was obtained a while ago we have 8042.48 all over the area so what will be our area here so we have 110 going to the duct here the 16 space caused by the rivet and then the thickness 5.03 millimeter so here we can like now determine the average maximum tensile stress so here we will yield a value of 17 mega pascals. Okay. So that's it for this uh, video lecture. So please go over with your Google class for your quiz for today. So your quiz covers the simple stresses, the bearing stresses. The, namely the bearing stress, the norm, the actual or the normal stress and then the shearing stress. So thank you for listening and good luck on your activity. So see you next video lecture.